Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I'm at Dingle, single pot still fourth release. Yay! So this is 46.5%. This is whiskey base number 167362. The person responsible for this is Graham Cole. Even though I could not find his name anywhere on this nice little tin or anywhere here on the bottle, by the way. I have bottle number 1556. And um, there were a total of 8,000 bottles um, that were produced according to my information. Bourbon and Odoloso. Uh, sherry, very, very interesting. So let's pull this over here a tiny little bit because I have a comparison whiskey and it is Dingle Pot Still number three. Here we still have the name distilled by Pete or Peter Mosley. At the bottom we have Oliver, we have Liam, and we have Peter, the three guys that started the distillery way back when. Uh, beer first, and then they went into the business of distilling, which we can only be thankful for, because they were one of the very, very first of the bigger boys that actually started distilling in Ireland in comparison to Middleton. So Cooley was first, and basically Dingle was one of the the ones that followed very quickly, um, not quickly after Cooley, but they were one of the first um, pioneers of the new uh, generation of whiskey distillers in Ireland. At the moment, uh, if my information is correct, there's 36 different distilleries that where a whiskey has actually flowed from. Uh, Tipperary with uh, Jennifer Nicholson was one of the last actually go online. Congratulations. So the first thing you notice is the bottle design is basically exactly the same. But look, um, the whole time there was one thing that identified the single pot still from the normal single malt was that green um, background color. And now even the, the can, the tin received that. The dark olive green with the gold um, lettering and the nice little red line differentiating that. Basically the same red line here for the Bordeaux colors. I like the bottle, a very, very nice bottle. What I don't like, sorry, I'm being a little bit picky. I would actually love to have a different picture each and every time on each and every bottling. I mean, hey, you have nine, 8,000 bottles going out. Why don't have the rights for one of these different pictures here? Basically, it says exactly the same thing each and every time on the back of the bottle here. Um, so it says here, for example, um, so with a note of dark chocolate, here it says here, the chocolate gives way. Well, the last paragraph is more of a tasting note thing. I, I must um, apologize, but they look so similar here. Um, yep, yeah, that's just my thing. Well, good. Let's first of all nose them. Odoloso Sherry, batch number three, was port. So this is 73% first filled bourbon casks, yay, with 27% Odoloso, 46.5%. And have I mentioned the price yet? I'm not sure. 97 euros and 90 cents. That's a lot of money for a no age statement from Ireland of anything, in my personal opinion. So the this is maybe six years old. Hmm. Um, we're getting up there finally, yay. It's no longer three, four, five years old. Probably six, maybe. No, I think it's six years old about. It has a good smell. I don't know if you ever had Hawaiian punch. I loved Hawaiian punch as a child. And every single time I get a dingle, I get Hawaiian punch, which I think is good. I actually like that a lot. Um, dingle is the reason I started this English YouTube channel. So in May of 2016, I started my German channel. And almost about a year later, I started doing the English channel. Why? Because I realized with Dingle and with other, um, a lot of my whiskeys I do in German, no one else has done a video about them. Either I'm so fast, could be, maybe I'm so privileged to be able to get whiskeys. Um, and also sometimes I just have um, the opportunity at, in Germany to get my hands on whiskeys that you sometimes get, can't even get in Ireland at a much better price, by the way. So um, many times people say, man, Jason, you must be so rich. You have all this whiskey. Well, this bottle actually I bought and I did a bottle share with it. So I have about 5CL. Um, everything else has actually been sold on to someone else for the price I paid for the bottle. 
So I do get a little handling fee for actually filling up the tiny little bottles and then sending them out. They look like this, 5CO, or like this, 10CO. And then I just wait until one of the little packages is full and then I park the um, samples here and then I package it all up and send it out. Uh, so this is a nice service that I can offer here in Germany, sending out alcohol with the mail from one um, person to another private citizen. And that's actually a, a privilege of Germany. All right, good. I have a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of sulfur in the end, but I got a lot of the Hawaiian punch. If you ever ask me if I if I smell a dingle, either the single pot still or the single malt, I'm getting Hawaiian punch, at least with the good barrels that I've had. Batch number one was Hawaiian punch to the single malt, and this is also Hawaiian punch again. Going back to number three, which I did not like. I'm sorry, I paid 94 euros for this. I paid 97 euros for that. Even on the nose. Oh, okay. Now this is much sweeter. The port comes through in a much, much sweeter. It's more like a strawberry. This is like a non-sweetened, um, almost not yet ripe raspberry. And this is like a strawberry punch. Mm, I like the nose of this. Now, let's taste. 46.5, 46.5. Totally different nose, but I like this one. Um, I like the nose here better. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maltiness. Tiny little bit of vanilla. The raspberry turns into more of that as a, a more of a Hawaiian punch, more of a pink grapefruit with raspberry, with a little bit of a pineapple moment, a tiny little bit of coconut in there. Mm. So let's see what they write. I like this. And the thing is, it's no longer young, youthful. It's um, for me, it's a teenage years. Now, it's not a teenage. It's not 13 years old. But if you look at the whiskey and you look at the lifespan, the very first third of its time in the barrel that's possible, it's like, oh, this is going to be too young. And then in the middle, you have, oh, nice. You have the, and then it gets over wood, and it's just usually, especially first fill. You can't, you normally, you can't keep something in a cask for 30 some years in a first fill. You need a tired old cask where you can let it set and let it mature and let it sleep. Uh, first fill is a little bit too active here. It says here, this fourth small batch release, a single pot Irish whiskey, brings the marriage of bourbon and Odoloso casts together with an intense richness and a rush of spice. Tones of dark fruits and figs all right, are followed by dark, dark chocolate with a sprinkling of roasted chopped nuts. The chocolate gives way to returning spice of soft wood and leather, a notes which guide you into a long, memorable finish. Dingle handmade character, unique whiskey. Um, from the edge, Solange. Um, I must admit that the finish is absolutely long here, and it's a memorable, nice finish. It's a fruity, light, woody um, type of finish that just just lingers. Nice, nice. It's still there. Um, very, very, very well done. Um, just um, just as a comparison, let's go to the third release, which, as I said, the nose is, is fabulous. If this whiskey tasted half as good as it smells, I would have empty, empty, emptied the bottle by now. Mm, cheers. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's metallic. It's young. It's not ready yet. This was pushed. This was this was torn out of its maturation in the barrels, poured in the bottles, screaming, "No, I'm not ready yet! Don't do it to me, please, no!" And they did it anyways. Well, they needed money. They needed cash flow. They needed product recognition. They needed to put something out, something out there. And the single pot still releases were just not there. 
luckily, the fourth was like, hey, I'm not perfect yet, but if you really need something, I can do my best. And I don't think most people will be disappointed with me. So use me, use me. I'm first fill, first fill bourbon and first fill Oroloso. Don't expect too much, but I'm good. <laughs> and that's what I'm getting here. Sorry, those little voices in my head are there sometimes. I don't know if that's a good thing or a very bad thing. Well, yeah. Um, and now I'm going to criticize this whiskey, the fourth fill, the price. Never, ever, nyada, nyet, nein. This whiskey is not worth 97.90. This is, in my opinion, a 45 euro whiskey. On a bad day, a 60 euro whiskey where I go, oh, I paid 60 euros for this. Little overpriced. Never, never, ever, ever, never is this a 100 euro whiskey. This was 94, this was 97.90. So um, I'm actually going to give this a B minus minus for the taste. It's actually more of a C plus plus, but shh. I'm going to give this whiskey a C plus plus, maybe on a good day a B minus minus. Um, but the value from money is actually a, a D. This is an F. <laughs> I cannot recommend anyone go out there buy the um, the third um, release. Sorry if you ever get the chance to do that. Don't expect anything um, that's going to be overwhelming. This, on the other on the other hand, is going in the right in the very right direction. They're almost there. I can imagine a twelve year old Dingle going, "Hey, Mr. Redbreast, twelve, you think you're good? Try me. I'm better, and this will actually be better, I think." But we have at least five more years to wait for that now, don't we? Hmm. All right, my question of the day is, and unfortunately, um, Dingle lost their um, distillery operator recently um, due to a sickness. That is, um, and very, very unfortunate about that. Um, and now they are working and figuring out who's going to be the next distillery manager. And that's my question is, what does a distillery manager do in your opinion? And also, do you know any good distillery managers? So um, I've met Cullum from Glen Farkless, the distillery manager. I've met another guy from Glen Scotia. I forget his name. I could very, barely understand him with his accent. Um, he was also the distillery manager. These people are actually um, a little different from what the master distillers do. The master distillers are basically responsible for the spirit that they produce on the pot stills, triple, triple distilled in this case, actually makes it all the way through the process into the casks. Not all master distillers get to pick the casks, some do. Not all master distillers blend their whiskies. Graham Collum did blend this and create this together with his team. Um, but the operating manager actually does everything else all around. He makes sure that the casks are there. He makes sure that the people are there. He makes sure that the machinery runs. He makes sure that actually electricity is still there. He makes sure that everything else um, around the whole business of making whiskey actually f operates, that the right things are at the right place at the right time. And that's actually more of a um, <laughs> almost almost the same type, same level of um, art form as it is to create a great whiskey as we have with Dingle many, many times. So um, what are some great distillery managers out there and what do they do in your opinion? Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much, sorry, for sharing and telling other people about this crazy guy over in Germany. Uh, tasting a lot of Irish whiskey and telling you the good and the bad, the ugly and the beautiful. In this case, this is getting up to the beauty pageant level. Not yet, but almost. And this, unfortunately, had to go home and um, shouldn't have been let in the door anyways. Sorry for being so harsh, but that's my opinion of the third um, expression. All the best to you, Whiskey Jason here. Please tell others, subscribe, and see you soon. Bye-bye.